Hi everyone! You've probably seen a couple of our previous videos wherein we cover the dangers of doing transactions online and the naivety of online buyers who are more than willing to part with their money without initially doing any proper research. As you probably remember, our videos feature some of the most prevalent scams that fester Russian online marketplaces like Avito. We have demonstrated how easy it is to get fooled by online scammers, and we also showed you ways on how to avoid them. Our team hopes that our videos help you become more cautious with doing transactions online, especially now that online shopping has become a part of modern life. However, recently we suddenly wondered how prevalent are online scams outside of Russia? What kind of creative schemes do scammers use? Do the tricks used on Avito only work in Russia? And how gullible are people outside of Russia? Well, let's all find out the answers to these questions. In today's video, we will try to pull some well-known Russian scam tricks on the inhabitants of the land of the free. According to the United States Federal Bureau of Investigations, there were 467,000 complaints of online fraud registered in 2019. This totaled to 3.15 billion US dollars in damages to the victims. The statistics showed a 300% increase compared to the recorded number of complaints in 2014 which was 1.1 billion US dollars in damages. The data only means one thing. Online scams are flourishing in the US and the country is a prime spot for lucrative schemes. Taking this into account, we decided to test how naive American online shoppers are. We did the test with the simplest online scheme, a sale of a popular item at a grossly reduced price. We already know how your average Russian buyer would react in a situation like this but it's really interesting to see if our American friends are just as gullible. Okay, so let's start our experiment by creating our ad. It has to feature a product that is hugely in demand. We decided to peddle one of our team members' iPhone as the object of sale. There are two main reasons for this. Nowadays, as some sort of way to weed out scammers, online buyers generally ask for some form of proof that the ad is legitimate. Since it is our personal iPhone that we are selling, we can easily work around providing any proof potential buyers require. Secondly, iPhones are obviously in demand. This is exactly the type of product that sells like hotcakes as soon as they see it's being sold for a low price. Despite iPhones being generally more available in the US than in Russia, plastering a really low price will surely attract a decent number of buyers. To make a convincing ad, we need to figure out how much these phones generally sell in the States. The iPhone XS 256GB model costs an average of $500 US dollars on Amazon, so we decided to make our asking price about 20% lower than average. That'll get us around $400 US dollars. After figuring out the asking price, we now need to write the description for the ad and at which websites we're going to post. We decided to post on Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist New York, and several other buy and sell groups. First site was classifiedads.com. The site required a minimum number of steps before successfully posting an ad. On the other sites that we visited, we were also required to confirm a US phone number. We also went through a couple of Facebook groups. In the description, we emphasize that the device is in excellent condition in order to make it seem like it is a really good deal. We also highlighted the fact that it has almost no scratches and any other forms of damage. And of course, to make our ad more credible, we stated that the main reason for the low price is because there is an urgent need for cash. There is one important rule in Craigslist which surprised us a bit. Apparently, all transactions must be done in person. This makes pulling our little stunt a little trickier than expected, so we need to figure out a convincing alibi why we cannot meet the potential buyer in person. But later on that. For now, we will give the impression that we are ready to meet any time. Also, since our payment data and profile are under a Russian name, we had to pick Brighton Beach as the meetup point. As we all know, this area is basically a little Russia within the US, so it wouldn't look so suspicious to the buyer why they are dealing with a Russian. Okay, everything's set. Honestly speaking, there was no expectation that our first post on Facebook would attract a huge number of buyers. However, we did not have to wait long before we received a message from a certain Gadiano. At this point, 
point of our conversation with this interested buyer, we are already envisioning making this video and showing you how easy it is to scam people on non-Russian sites. We did not even have to do any persuading. We sat there thinking, wow, this is easier than we imagined. Here, we deliberately said that we are not currently in the States and that someone else, a girlfriend, will meet up instead to give him the phone. This little part is quite important, so there will be no questions why he will be transferring to a Russian registered account. We said that we live in the States but not physically there at the moment and that our girlfriend will complete the transaction on our behalf. The buyer wants the phone to be sent by mail, but we insisted on a personal meeting so the scam looks even more convincing, therefore erasing any possible doubt. The deal is almost secure. The buyer's money is now within our grasp. We agreed that we would send the package through FedEx the next day because it is already 4 a.m. in NYC and that our fictional girlfriend is already sleeping. We agreed that the payment will be transferred through PayPal, so our dear buyer asked for our email address. In exchange, we asked for the address where the device will be shipped to. While speaking to this particular buyer, we were multitasking, posting on other sites, so we could not immediately respond to his messages. But it seems that he is a little too excited to get the device that he started sending worried messages why we did not respond in the last three minutes. Yeah, just three minutes, the guy is already panicking. Anyway, we sent him a payment link for the PayPal transfer, which he just needed to click. Now, tell us, our dear viewers, at this point of our conversation with this buyer, you've probably already sensed that something is a bit off. If yes, then that means that our previous videos have taught you well. If you're scratching your head now and are clueless on what we are talking about, do yourself a favor and watch all of our previous videos. After sending the PayPal payment link to our buyer, for some reason, he ignored it and proceeded to ask for an email address instead. We are now growing a little suspicious of our buyer because, really, he doesn't need our email address to make the payment. We gave him a PayPal payment link for this very reason. So, why does he need our email address? We were more than curious, so we decided to give him a dummy one. It seems, ladies and gentlemen, that the tables have turned. We sat there thinking we are scamming our dear buyer, Gadiano. Turned out that he was doing the same to us. We couldn't believe what was happening. We were so sure that this was a closed deal. We sent a screenshot of the email that he obviously wrote himself. It was a ridiculously written phishing email, supposedly from PayPal, but sent from a Gmail account. This was an unexpected setback from our little experiment, albeit a funny one. We were so set on scamming people that we almost became the victim ourselves. We made a lot of videos about our escapade on a veto. In all cases, online buyers can easily be divided into these categories. The ones that are ready to buy, no questions asked, wouldn't even do the, even the most basic security features, those who had to be persuaded for a long time, and those who immediately back out after sensing the scam. But in general, online buyers, at least Russian ones, contact you because they are, in a way, interested in what you are selling. However, it seems that there is another category of online buyers that are not found in Russia. Try to guess what this particularly special buyer wanted when he, they contacted us. A. Buy the iPhone. B. Conduct a psychotherapy session. C. Offer sex. D. Offer to sell their iPhone. Alright, write your guess in the comments below. Okay, let's now check what a certain Michael wrote us. At first we thought, oh well, maybe our buddy Mike just got carried away and that we need to get the conversation back on track. Yeah, man, but I really don't think you need to part with your iPhone right now. I was in the same position not a long time ago. Real shit, man. I moved here from the Midwest hoping to find a really good job because, you know, it's New York. I have a family back home to support, so I made the jump with closed eyes. At first, it was really tough. I didn't know anybody here. No support system at all. I lived off of my savings until it ran dry. Luckily, an old friend from high school helped me land a trucking job. This made me get back on my feet, so I know how it is to be broke, man. Things will get better. Well, you know, maybe you don't need to sell your iPhone. Just saying. Well, that's basically how our conversation ended. Oh, well. Well, wherever you are, Mike from the Midwest, we hope you are doing much better now. 
So with our first two potential buyers, we not only almost got scammed, but also became instant psychotherapists. We've been making videos about online scams for some time now, and these two definitely stood out for their originality. As interesting as these interactions were, we still have an experiment that needs to be completed, so we decided to post on a larger group on Marketplace. We chose one that has an audience of more than a million people. As soon as the ad went live, two people contacted us immediately. If it seemed to you that this experiment has failed spectacularly, you are mistaken. We had a few more conversations with interested buyers and we managed to come into an agreement with one. We sent this buyer our basic spiel in which we used to the other buyer. She mentioned that she's from New Jersey, which meant we would need to ship the device to her. Now, at this point, this is already a surefire deal, but based on our previous experience, wherein we almost got scanned ourselves, we needed to play it cool and not seem too desperate. Most importantly, we need to establish that we are the possible victims here, not her. We thought that by asking an advance payment, it would make it look like we are being cautious and that there are other potential buyers. We close the deal with the agreement that the payment will be Again, on PayPal, all was smooth sailing until the buyer started having doubts due to the payment account being registered in Russia and, of course, under our Russian name. We really thought that our experiment had failed. It absolutely felt like we failed at convincing the buyer because instead of pacifying her doubts, she started getting a little more inquisitive. We pretty much ran out of excuses, so we told her that if she is not sure about buying our device, she's welcome to buy from someone else. We were worried that she'd call our bluff, but to our surprise, we made a counteroffer instead. She wanted to send $150 US dollars up front instead of the original agreement and the rest of the payment upon receipt of the device. This wasn't really the ending we wanted, but it is more than we deserve. She did transfer the funds through PayPal and frankly speaking, we felt guilty that our victim happened to be a single mom that only wanted to give her boy a present. It was a bit difficult admitting to her that it was just an experiment, so we told her that there was some issue and that we couldn't ship the device. We did return her money in full and we're hoping she did not get scammed by someone else on Marketplace. In conclusion, we can say that Facebook users, particularly the ones on Marketplace, are more gullible than the ones in Russian Avito. It's important to note though that we came into this conclusion only after doing one experiment and that Facebook has a larger number of users. Therefore, there's always a chance that you'll come across a more diverse group of buyers, some just more gullible than the last. As always, if you liked our video, support us by hitting the like button. We'd also like to know your thoughts and experiences on getting scammed when shopping online. Let us know your thoughts and stories in the comments section below. This was Project Any Name. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.